Hey, this is Lexi from Reality School. In this video, we'll go over how to create a model placement history view to improve our app's user experience. When completed, our app will display a horizontal grid with thumbnails for recently placed models in the scene. We will also have a most recently placed button that provides the user with a shortcut to quickly place multiple instances of the same model in the scene. Before we get started, this is the hardware and software used in this video. If you are using anything older or newer, you might have to make some adjustments to your code. We have several action items for this video. First, we'll create a published variable to keep track of recently placed 3D models in the AR view scene. Second, we'll create a most recently placed button that provides the user with a shortcut to quickly place multiple instances of the same 3D model in the scene. Third, we'll extend the view protocol by adding functionality to dynamically hide and unhide the most recently placed button. And finally, we will create a horizontal grid that displays an array of models for which the first element is the most recently placed model and the last element the least recently placed model. This array will be an ordered collection of unique elements. So without further ado, let's get started. For the first action item, we'll create a recently placed published variable, which is an array of model. The last element in the array will be the most recently placed model. In the placement settings.swift file, we'll add a new property. Create a published variable called recently placed and set its type to an array of model. We will also initialize the recently placed variable by assigning it an empty array. For documentation purposes, let's add a comment. The comment will say, this property retains a record of placed models in the scene. The last element in the array is the most recently placed model. Next, in the will set property observer of confirmed model, we will append the model confirmed for placement to the recently placed array. For our next action item, we'll create a most recently placed button that provides the user with a shortcut to quickly place multiple instances of the same 3D model in the scene. In the controlView.swift file, right below our control button, we'll create our most recently placed button. Create a new struct called most recently placed button and have it adopt the view protocol. To conform to the view protocol, add a body variable and use Xcode autocomplete to help you along. Before we populate the body, let's declare a placement settings property with the environment object attribute. Inside the body, we'll create a skeleton for our button. In the action block, add a print statement with the message, most recently placed button pressed. We will also assign the last element in the recently placed array from placement settings to the selected model variable in placement settings. By doing this, we provide the user with a shortcut to quickly place multiple instances of the same model in our AR view scene. In the label block, We'll use an if let statement to safely unwrap and assign the last element in recently placed to a new constant. We'll call this constant most recently placed model. We use an if let statement because the last property of a collection will be nil if the collection is empty. If the collection is not empty, meaning a most recently placed model exists, we'll create an image using the UI image constructor and pass in most recently placed model thumbnail. We'll use several modifiers to style our image. First, add the resizable modifier to allow our image to be resized. Next, set the frame width of our image to 46 points. And finally, set the aspect ratio of our image to 1 over 1 and the content mode to fit. By setting the ratio to 1 over 1, we enforce a square aspect ratio. If the collection is empty, meaning we don't have a most recently placed model, we'll create an image using the system name constructor and pass in clock.fill. Set the font to the system font with font size 35, the foreground color to white, and the button style to plain button style. To wrap up our most recently placed button, we'll add some modifiers to the button. Set the frame width and height to 50 points, the background to color white, and finally a corner radius of 8 points. Next, remove the control button for most recently placed in control button bar and add our custom most recently placed button. Ideally, we would dynamically hide our most recently placed button if our recently placed array is empty. That brings us to our next action item. In our third action item, 
will extend the view protocol by adding functionality to dynamically hide and unhide the most recently placed button. To do so, we'll create a new file. Right-click on model.swift and select New File. Select iOS as the platform and Swift file as the template. Click Next. Give the file a name. In this case, we'll call it View Plus Extensions. Click Create. We can remove Import Foundation and instead import Swift UI. Next, we'll create an extension for View. I found the code to dynamically hide and unhide a Swift UI view on Stack Overflow. Let's visit the link, copy the code, and paste it in our extension. Now that we've pasted in our code, let's go over it together. We see that the hidden function has a view builder attribute. In addition, the function takes in one parameter called should hide. We can also see that the original author has omitted the argument label by using an underscore. When calling the function, we will not need to provide an argument label for should hide. Inside the function, we see a switch statement that hides the view if should hide is true or displays it when should hide is false. We can now go back to control view and update our most recently placed button. We want to hide our most recently placed button when our recently placed array in placement settings is empty. We will of course need access to the placement settings environment object. We can use our custom hidden function and pass in self.placement settings, dot recently placed, dot is empty. Our most recently placed button will now be hidden if the recently placed array is empty and will display the thumbnail of the most recently placed model if the recently placed array is not empty. For the final action item, we will create a recents grid that displays an array of models for which the first element is the most recently placed model and the last element the least recently placed model. This array will be an ordered collection of unique elements. In our browseview.swift file, right below our browseview struct, create a new struct called recents grid and have it adopt the view protocol. To conform to the view protocol, add a body variable and use Xcode autocomplete to help you along. Before we populate the body, let's declare a placement settings property with the environment object attribute. We will also copy paste the binding property line from browse view into recents grid. Inside the body, we want to create a horizontal grid displaying thumbnails for our recently placed models. In this grid, the most recently placed model will be first and the least recently placed model will be last. To create this grid, we will use an if statement to check if our recently placed array is not empty. If there are recently placed models, we'll instantiate a horizontal grid. We'll pass in a binding to show browse, pass in recents for our title parameter, and for items we'll temporarily pass in an empty array. Next, we will work on a function that will return an array of models for which the first element is the most recently placed model and the last element the least recently placed model. This array will be an ordered collection of unique elements, meaning no model will be repeated in this array. Let's create this function. The name will be get recents unique ordered, it will not have any parameters, and the return type will be an array of models. We'll create a new variable called recents unique ordered array. This variable will be an array of models, and we will initialize it with an empty array. We'll create another variable called model name set, which will be a set of strings, initialized with an empty set. A set is an unordered collection of unique elements. If this is your first time using a set, I highly recommend taking a look at the Swift documentation to get a better understanding of the various collections supported by Swift. As a challenge, write down the differences between an array, a set, and a dictionary. Also write down the ideal use case for each type of collection. Post your answers in the comments below. Let's get back to our function. We will use a for in loop to iterate over our recently placed array in reverse order. The reason for doing this is that we want the first element in the recents unique ordered array to be the most recently placed model in our scene. As you might recall, the last element in the recently placed array contains the most recently placed model in the scene. Next, we can check if the name of the current model exists in the model name set. If it does not, we append this model to the recents unique ordered array and also insert the model name into model name set. Once the foreign loop has completed execution, we can return the recents unique ordered array. 
Make sure that you understand the code in this function. If you do not, step through each line to see how we can create an ordered collection of unique elements using an array and a set. Now that our get recents unique ordered function is complete, let's remove the empty array in the horizontal grid constructor and call our function. The final thing we'll do is create an instance of recents grid in the scroll view of our browse view. We are now ready to test the app. Make sure you have a physical device selected in your active scheme and press run. We'll open up our browse view and select a model for placement. I'll pick this white chair and place it in the scene. We'll open up our browse view again and select the tulip for placement. Let's add one more model. I'll pick the teacup. When we open our browse view, we see a recent grid displaying a history of the models that are placed in the scene. In this case, we see a teacup, a tulip, and a white chair. And finally, let's test our most recently placed button. To do so, close the browse view. We can now see a thumbnail of the teacup on the bottom left button in the control button bar. When we tap on it, the placement view and focus entity are displayed. When we confirm placement, we see that another teacup has been added to our scene. That's it for this video. If this content was helpful and you'd like to support our channel, please give the video a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe and enable all notifications to be notified when new videos are released. Thank you for watching and until the next time.